Just a few quick announcements before we go to the thing you're all actually here for. <clears throat> well, that too. And then maybe to listen to a few people. I mean, you know. All right, uh, just a few quick announcements. Uh, folks, please don't mess with the hotel. Um, they like us. They let us come back. So please don't stick stickers on the wall. Stick stickers on our stuff. Stick stickers on, like, you know, vendor stuff. Stick sticker on whoever, like, is okay with you putting stickers on it. But uh, we like the hotel. They treat us pretty well, and they let us come back year after year, which, given us, is always a good thing. <laughs> Um, also, the uh, NSA posters you see throughout the conference, and probably most of you have seen floating around the internet, uh, so they actually were made available through a FOIA effort from uh, governmentaddict.org, uh, who did some awesome work to get that stuff out of the NSA. Uh, they're actually going to be giving a talk, um, uh, and, or, sorry, they're going to be doing a workshop in Budapest uh, on the sixth floor on Saturday from 7 o'clock to 9.30, FOIA strategies and tactics. So if you're interested in doing things like that or getting more information out of government agencies that historically tell everyone to go shove, um, stop down. <clears throat> okay. All right, so also one last thing. The uh, Hacker Spelling Bee is happening tonight at midnight in the uh, second track, which is Booth, booth sorry. Um, and uh, you can still sign up down at the info desk or show up at midnight to participate. Come have interesting words, get drunk, see everybody make fools of themselves, make a fool of yourself. It's all good times. <clears throat> so now what you're all actually here to see. Uh, liquor, I mean. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll drink for that. Yeah, baby. This is all apple juice. <laughs> <laughs> apple juice and books. We're here for the Locksport Variety Hour, uh, the two-hour session, uh, with Tool and Friends. So let's give it up for Lady Merlin, Max, Click, Ann, Aiden, Night Owl, No Hack Me, No Sleep, Chaz, Spam, Smoke Legend, and of course, Deviant Olam. <laughs> well, you're in the list, so you get a shout out. Enjoy. This, uh, this is so much fucking fun, and we can net, we net, like, how many people have been coming to Hope for a while, right? So like, you would think that this is a topic that gets played out. There has been ha like hacking locks and lock picking content since I've been coming, and that's been H2K. And yet, every time they put us in a room, y'all show up. So we love you for being here. I love, I, I do none of like the lock pick stuff at Hope anymore. People keep coming up to me, they're like, hey, you're that guy, I learned stuff from you here. I'm like, wasn't this year, because it was all these people. So please, Tool and everyone else who comes out, can I get everyone to thank them for being here and missing all the cool talks to teach you. <laughs> so even though they introed us, uh, if it's like, if you jump in on a topic, um, please re-intro yourself uh, each time you speak up for the first couple of rounds, because there's a lot of names and a lot of people, and we're gonna have other friends coming up and other people rocking the mic. The way we're gonna do this, there's sort of four vague styles of, of event, and we'll flip through them a number of times. So this evening will consist of tool tutelage, which will be lessons that are not the intro talk, because let's face it, after 10 years or more, we've had the intro talk enough times on this stage, so you get that downstairs. Up here, the tutelage will be fun, different talks. Project box, stuff we've been working on or stuff someone else has been working on that we want to talk about. Maybe we will inspire you to work on something. That could be fun, lulls hacking. Uh, letters from Locksport, always a good thing to involve the audience, right? Uh, this is Q&A, both from the internet or from yourselves, if you want to get those Fitbit steps in and walk all the way across to New Jersey and back all the way up this aisle to get to the microphone, uh, you, can, you can rock a question to us there. And sometimes, I don't know if anybody brought some cool shit, but we usually try to do, like, locks from the audience, and we'll throw it up on, you know, we, we'll do a little little stuff going on on a camera and make things happen. Woo, is that actually working? Bad ass. Wow. So actually, professional. So yeah, uh, now I'm off it. There we are. So yeah, locks from the audience and, and what are they? What are they not like? We've got a couple of cool things we brought as well. We've got some shit to give away. I don't know if, you know, sleeping at the hotel pen is hard on your eyes and ears, but I always get ear, you know, earplugs and like eye masks when I fly up in Delta One. So like, I'm gonna be flinging those out. I'm sure you have better things to give away. But right off the hop, uh, we want to teach you some cool shit, and as, as we're talking, you'll be thinking about questions you want to ask. I think we're going to start all the way, all the way uh, stage right. Boom, Maxi. 
Hi, everybody. I'm Max. I'm from Boston. Yeah. How are y'all doing? Woo! So we're going to switch uh, HDMI magics. Locks are awesome. Locks, locks in the yard. There they are. So while they're switching that feed, what Max is going to talk about is the uh, the like multi-wheel kind of combination locks. Many times you, how many people in this room while they're working on that have ever like shimmed a combo like a gym locker lock, right? So that's in America, especially when we think of a combination lock, that, that classic like gym locker lock is what a lot of people think of. But there's a lot of ways to do combination locks. You can do, you know, like, well, you could do safes. Like we've done safe cracking stuff before. I'm a safe technician. You do some safe openings when you run into them. But as far as like interesting, weird hacks against combination locks, the, the brass, especially the brass body with the four dials that now nah, you're seeing some nods even in the darkness. Max is kind of the guy for that. That was originally a design by Sesame. Uh, most people know it now as a master lock product. Masters really flooded that market. And you have all kind of good shit, right? Yeah. They got you, they got you hot on the wires? Uh, we'll see. We just, we just all right. settings. <laughs> That's no problem. Yeah, works. Uh, I mean, worst case scenario, you switch seats with me and take this HDMI, but you know, yeah. it's all good. We'll give it a couple more seconds. Here's a booster seat. Yeah. In the meantime, when everything doesn't work right at a con, what do we do? Improvise. Drink. 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 All right. Go down the line. You can actually introduce yourselves and what you're drinking while they're working on that HDMI. So we said Max is down there. He's going to talk. Lady Merlin, what are you drinking? Um, far from the tree cider, pineapple jalapeno cider. Woo! From Boston. Courtesy of Max. <laughs> My bag was an extra 50 pounds coming up. Click. What are you drinking? Uh, Wrench IPA. So Portland. So, uh, we're getting yes. Portland. Uh, yeah. No hack me. It's a uh, Michter small batch bourbon from Kentucky. Yeah. They know. Oh, we got it. I'm drinking whiskey because I always am drinking whiskey. Uh, Night Owl. Uh, right now I'm drinking some of that very nice uh, Michter's whiskey, uh, but also. Uh, Absent. One of our one yes. of the members of uh, the New York chapter of Tool uh, passed away recently after a long illness, and uh, amongst other things that he left to us was a bottle of uh, some red absinthe. Ooh! So we're passing that along for the panel. Yeah, sir. So this talk might get weird later. You just, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> might be just guaranteed. Weird. Yeah, right. Yeah. What do you got? Hi, I'm, I'm Ray from Germany, from the sports front of Sperrtechnik Deutschland. <laughs> and I'm drinking Romulan ale because in Germany we can drink normal alcohol since we're 16. Yeah. 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 I'm Chaz from New York, with the New York uh, section of uh, Tool. And I'm having absinthe in memory of uh, Mr. E. And uh, some of this lovely bourbon down here. It uh, goes down real right smooth. On. Salute. Last Ooh. drink and then Max is ready, I think. Oh no, we got two people. Sorry. Yeah. Two more. Three. 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 Oh, we got. Don't forget. Spam. Here, right? Spam. Spam. <laughs> Smoke Spam. legend. Um, drinking absinthe oh, for Mr. E. And um, what was this? Bourbon. It was bourbon. <laughs> Apologies. It was bourbon. It was good. So good I need to refill when we get a chance. Yeah. Pass the mic. Huh? Hi, I'm Spam, and I'm drinking the Mitter Small Batch Bourbon. It's excellent. Um, it's not your friend. Spam's not my friend. Spam's not, yeah, not my friend. friend. Apparently, Spam is not Facebook friend. thinks I'm not your friend. <laughs> I'm the sleep, and I'm drinking Mr. East Bourbon. Uh, absent. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. <laughs> so we got, we got slides. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. Wow. So once again, my name is Max. I'm from Boston. I'm here to talk about my presentation, Open Sesame, Sesame Locks, and the Master 175. So Sesame-style locks are locks that have multiple dials on them. Sometimes they're numbers or letters. Uh, they tend to be picked because you don't need to pass out keys to everyone. You just tell them what the password is, which makes it way easier to share the access. Um, one of the most popular Sesame Locks that I've seen is the Master 175. Uh, it shows up, um, so the way it works is you dial in the combination, you push the body and the shackle together, uh, you pull the body away from the shackle or the shackle away from the body and it pops open. Uh, one of its beneficial features is that you can kind of set your own combination. Let's go super slow. 
So it just comes with this little key. You stick the key in while it's open. You change the dials. <laughs> Mine too, what a coincidence. <laughs> Uh, Wait, did that's it. Have, and that's luggage. all you need to do is change the combination so you can set it all yourself. You don't need a uh, locksmith. So this became interesting to me because uh, Aiden, one of the other Boston members, came back from New York City Maker Fair. And he handed me this lock and he goes, this little girl came up to us and she asked us if we could find out what the combination was for this lock. And I talked to the other guys and we were looking at each other and one of them said, well, there's definitely a way to do it, I just don't know anyone who knows how, but we can open it for you. So they opened the lock and then brought it back. She didn't want the lock, apparently. No combination, it wasn't worth it to her. Um, and I was like, ah, I got a lot of these hanging around. Like, I wanna, like, I gotta find out now how to do this. So once I started looking into this lock, I started to see it all over the place. Um, here was in a botanical garden in Austin. That picture Dee posted, and it's a padlock guarding some very nice cars. Uh, all over utility plants, trucks, power boxes outside cell towers, gates into the cell towers, this Master 175, because it's super easy. You set a combination, you tell all your emergency response people, you tell all your, um, your cell maintenance, telco maintenance people, and they just have to have that one combination. Um, they also get sold with carts for schools and institutions, uh, full of like iPads, nice expensive cart. Whoop. Where'd I go? There we go. And here's another picture of everyone at a site with shared use that has had to put a lock there, and they can just remove one of those and open the whole thing. And everyone's picked a Master 175 except for one group. Second to last there. So the fact that there's a custom combination kind of makes it appealing because if you can get that combination, there's a good chance someone's reused it. We've only got so much stuff we can keep in our head. And if we have to remember a combination for the lock on the gate outside, maybe we don't want to remember a separate combination for the alarm or for our ATM pin code. Or for that really expensive combination lock, a simplex lock on a door. So if we tear this lock down, um, there's a whole ton of technical terms here. Where is it? There we go. So there's the shackle, which is the thing that you put around whatever you're locking up. These two items are called pawls. They stick into the shackle. There's a spring and um, bar there that go in between the pawls to push them apart, keep them in place. Here's an actuator that has a tang at the top that fits in between the pawls. And these fingers at the bottom interact with flat spaces on these flywheels, which lock into the dials with numbers. And here it's a little bit more assembled. So you can see the spring, the rod in the middle. The flywheels are lined up with each of the dials. And the actuator is just removed from the lock. But. <laughs> Who really cares how it works? I just want it open, right? So guess what? We can bypass it. Has anyone not seen this bypass before? Oh, you're in for it. It's stupid easy. Oh. Stupid easy. Beautiful. If you grab the lock and you take a hook and you insert it above a dial, you push uh, the body in the shackle, uh, which removes the tension on the actuator from the pawls, um, and sweep the hooks sweep to the direction of the hook's curve as you pull it away from the lock. Um, that will have it catch on one of these fingers down here and pull um, the tang out from in between the pawls. So you guys get it, like that tang is in, is in the way of the latch pawls, right? So it has to get out of the way. Now normally, I think you were, you were showing it, normally it's, there's a combination of like processes of the fingers and the wheels, and normally this, the, they will drop down into the wheels. Yeah, so there's some flat spots mm -hmm. uh, on, the, on the flywheels. And normally when all those are facing up towards the fingers, the fingers drop down and the other side of the actuator, the tang comes up out of the pulse. Yeah, so it's like a seesaw. But imagine a seesaw that isn't actually really well connected at the pivot. 
if all you want is the kid on the other end of the seesaw to go up, you don't have to really fuck around with like, your side goes down, you just walk over there and pull the kid up. <laughs> so here's a quick video of, so the, the lock is locked here. Move the mouse. Move them. There you go. Everyone feels better. And there's the hook over here, right. and I'm going to pull down, which is going to pull the other side up, and I let go, and it's it. The lock's open. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Boom. <laughs> yeah. Can you show that again? <clears throat> keep keep your eye on the right side of that actuator, the tip of that actuator that's currently in between those blocks. Do you have another video? It's kind of hard to see, man. Or do you actually have one? I, have a demo? I, I have it here. So oh, we got yeah. the document camera. We got a way to switch the document. Well, we'd have to we'd have to refuck the HDMI. How many more slides you got? How about I go through it and then yeah we'll do yeah it. We'll go through it. the rest yeah. of your slides and we'll then we'll think you fixed it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lols. All right, everybody, drink. It's uh, drink. Right. Drink it, time. Drink. Right on. Is this a hacker con or what? So good. AP's hard. We all right. We're making this work. Yeah, camera's coming up. All right. Let's yeah. see. Camera ready? Woo! No? They, no, no that's Max's slides again. No. no. Okay. Can we see it? Oh, yeah. all right. Yeah. Let me get out of your way. Let me bump that up. <clears throat> oh, so oh, come on. I'm bad at sticker. There we go. It's so much easier. Right. So it's locked. If I push it in, it's not going to open. So now, I'm just going to work the hook in. And I'm gonna pull down and away. Yeah. That's it. Open. <laughs> All right. No, no. You want to demonstrate the other? Yeah, this, sure. Yeah. Quick stick. As soon as, uh, yeah. One more time. Hopefully, you can see it a bit better oh. now. So it slips Almost. sometimes. While it's easy to do, don't do it with our tools. <laughs> there you go. Fair. So, that is the first bypass. Open. And there's another bypass. Yeah. Uh, switch places. The other one. Oh, you just gotta hold the light. Yeah. There's far more than one way to skin this cat. Yeah. So, this is uh, another tool. Basically, it's uh, just a piece of feeler gauge with a handle on it. It's a tool that has like 19 different names, yeah. so every manufacturer calls Quick it Quick shims, different. decoders. Easy decoder, mini your knife. Forward, yeah. You're off camera. Oh. Oh. There you go. It's all right. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I can actually see the camera. So basically all you do is you work that in along the side of these wheels. It can be kind of tight sometimes. You got to be real careful. If it really starts to seem like it's veering off, then you probably aren't in the right spot. Yeah. A, a lot of people try to say the right side of the third wheel, but no matter if it's not work if it's not working in there, flip the dials, try a different one. You can get it in all four dials. It doesn't really matter which one. Unless you hit the spring. Oh. There we go. You got it? And before you release the, the shackle, just show them that actuator lifting. You got a good angle on it right here. If I can actually get it in. Can you see? I can do it. You there? No. Yeah, so here. And you wrote here, hold that. So if we show it from the top maybe? No, it's yeah. the, the there. tool isn't yeah, quite in. Oh, that's the, oh. the tool isn't quite in, oh. in place. Getting a bit beat up, so. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So like we all the way out of where it should be there. Yeah. 
and then you just let go and it pops open. Yeah. Open. 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 So Max, you told Master Lock about this, right? I mean, they've apparently <laughs> known about it for a while. And how many fucks were given? Zero. <laughs> Zero. The new ones are fixed. The new, the new lines are actually fixed now. No, they're not. So, I, the black no. ones aren't either. They're, they're just no. harder. It's uh, not fixed. Stanley's copy does actually Stanley's does actually have precautions to Man. protect against uh, these bypass attacks. And I realize um, I, I spoke over Avi a little bit. Now, there, there are the new ones. There's a couple varieties. The ones that have the ribs down the side, those are fixed. They the, do. Well, they are, they are not as vulnerable. I'll get to it if you want. Oh, sweet. <laughs> Coming up. You want this? Are you, are you, oh, good. We're, we're rocking. Sweet. So, as we just saw, there's not one but two bypasses. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this slide because we just went over it. But you insert the little tool in on either side of the dial push in on the shackle into the body, lever up, let go of the shackle, it'll pop open. You guys already saw something? <laughs> so I had a lot of, I, I, I heard everyone said, oh, you can totally decode this. And there were a ton of videos of people decoding locks that look like this. And they're like, oh, it's so easy. And I talked to a bunch of people and they were like, yeah, you probably can, but I don't know how to do it. I'm like, all right, so this really bothered me. Um, so I ended up, cutting the thing open, I decided, all right, I have to get into this. And I took a class on how to use a manual metal mill and just cut a lock open um, so I could see the bottom half of the dials. And that allowed me to determine that uh, the way, uh, more about how the flywheels worked. So there's a, um, a well here that this piece in the bottom of the lock fits into. Um, and there's a flat spot here. And so the flat spots go underneath the fingers. And the well is for when you change the combination. It allows the flywheel to move over that. Are they directly opposite one another? On they the are. The center of the flat is exactly five off from the center of the well. So if you can find one of them, you know exactly where the other one is. So instead of having to go through the dial 10 times at the most, it's just five times at the most and you work on one dial at a time. Uh, here's just a little image showing uh, how the flywheel and the, the dials fit together. Mm -hmm. So this really cut down uh, the fact that they were Whoa. straight from each other, the amount of stuff that had to be tested and how quickly we could decode this. Uh, so, the actuator is pulled into the lock body by the spring. It's got four fingers that rest on the flywheel. Flywheel flats are underneath the fingers when the dials are in the correct position. The correct number uh, for the combination is, plus, is minus 2.5, that needs to be corrected, from the center of the flat. Um, so when I practice this regularly, I could decode the lock in about five minutes. Um, so, you know, you pop this thing off a gate and you walk away and you decode the lock and you come back and now you've got the valid combination. That might work in other places too. Um, talked about that. So one of the really funny thing uh, that actually came from Deef is uh, apparently he was training some people and he said, have you ever seen this? And they all raised their hands and said, it's on our rifles. <laughs> and I'm like, really? So I'm sure there's more security there, but like maybe not the best thing. There's not? <laughs> not? Yeah. They're not in a secure locker, no? That was right. a funny day. I, I jumped out of my seat yeah. when I saw that. So Master Lock came out with a new design. Uh, model 975, 1175, uh, a bunch of other model numbers. They still produce the old uh, Master 175. Um, including in their new line, there is at least one that has the same workings. Uh, I get a lot of people ask me like, oh, is this the new style Master 175 or the old style? So this lovely cutaway uh, picture provided by Master Lock, um, <laughs> that's the new style. Um, and if you want to find out, there's markings on the top that tell you the position the shackle needs to be in to change the combination uh, that are not there on the Master 175 with the older models. Here's the Master 175 that we just talked about. 
it has a change key hole on the side. So it needs the change key, change the combination. It's got the older guts inside. Um, they've got a whole range of these. Some of the same model numbers, just have an M in front of them, and that's a completely different model. Uh, so the M176 is redesigned, but it's still using the same insides. So for the new model, um, they still have dials. The dials still have a flywheel. Um, the flywheels have multiple false gates here. Um, but instead of something kind of rocking and sitting on top of them, there's a big gate that goes down into kind of wells or cuts in those flywheels. Um, and so the actuator moves laterally, like right? It pushes down into them? Yeah, it pushes up and down into them. Um, and so then when you want to change the combination, you pull out the shackle, rotate it, and then push down the shackle, and that will move that plunger, separating the dials from the flywheel. This one, you just rotate the dials the correct combination, you pull, you don't have to push in, pull on the shackle and it opens. Uh, combination change just involves pulling out the shackle, rotating it 90 degrees, and then putting it back to its original position. But it's not vulnerable to the bypass. So yes. not as much fun there. <laughs> Yet. Give it time. Yeah. But what about decoding it? So you can decode this without any tools. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> uh, move all the dials to zero for this. Ten put tension on the shackle and start moving the first dial up and down. And notice how, much, how far back and forth it goes. Then release the tension on the shackle, move to the next number, move the dial up and down. The dial that has the most play back and forth is the correct gate. That is the correct number in the combination for that wheel. So you keep moving down. Yeah until they're all in the right spot. And when you hit the last one, it's just going to open because you're tensioning the shackle. Do you have some demos of these that people can play with downstairs? I do. Uh, I have one of these. I've got my cutaways. I've got a regular one. I've got some tools. It's fabulous. Um, so when I started looking into this lock, I found out that it wasn't originally a master lock design. Um, a company called the Corbin Cabinet Lock Company um, had this design patented before them, uh, and they called it the Sesame Lock, which I guess is where the name comes from. Mm -hmm. um, they still make this lock, um, and it's slightly different than the master version. Uh, there's no gate, so there's just a flat spot on that flywheel, so now we kind of lose some of our fun in decoding that. They also grouped the flywheels into pairs next to the first dial and the third dial which means that you either have to have a really precise tool that's not going to bow back and forth uh, to do one flywheel at a time, or you have to do two flywheels at a time. Oh, and they're moved a little bit farther away from those dials, so you really have to get down there at a right angle. They also filled some of the space around the actuator with extra metal, um, and they put a little, um, no, that's the next version. Uh, and it pushes into the actuator instead of um, pulling away. We can still bypass it though, just like the Master 175. It's, it's, why not? It's, it's more difficult to get to work and there's way less feedback than you're in the right spot, but it works. So, no video. All right, so Stanley, makes a variant of this lock as well. The only good one. And we were kind of surprised. Night Owl sent me a message. He goes, have you seen the Stanley variant? I'm like, no. And so he's like, I can't get the bypass to work. So I'm like, uh, what? <laughs> he's like, no, I've been trying for a while. I even broke one of the tools. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, OK. Well, all right, now I have to go on Amazon and buy a bunch of them. <laughs> so I bought a bunch of them. And sure enough, we could not get that actuator to move out of the way of the pawls without putting in the correct combination. Uh, it had way tighter tolerances. It was way more difficult for us to get the tool in there. Um, and even when we did, it just wasn't moving. Their seesaw is just literally properly connected at the fulcrum and doesn't have enough play to like so, move. Yeah. So they made that, that tang that oh, has to go up, they made it thicker. So there's less space for it to travel up. 
Um, they had way tighter tolerances, as I was saying before, so you couldn't, it was harder to get the tool in. Um, and they have an extra, an extra pin over here that's pushing into the housing of the body, so it's harder to move the plate around. Um, but it was somewhat weaker, the top of that actuator. Uh, we accidentally knocked it off one night with a sharpened screwdriver and a bike lock. Uh, and uh, the metal housing was, the metal just wasn't, wasn't as good. Um, so that's what I got. Uh, anyone got questions? Want to give me their passwords? Mother's maiden names? Hunter 2. Oh. Hunter 2? <laughs> My password too. <laughs> How many people have, now we had hands oh, yeah. earlier that said people have not, some people hadn't seen the bypass. How many people have seen these locks in the field and are now interested in trying this? Yeah, like, shit is out there. The, every, every lock you just saw Max talk about, even the old ones, are still on, like, in the retail channels today. Yeah. Still on store shelves. I believe they might still be manufacturing them. Definitely that M176, which is their new line. Sad. Um, and has... Uh, Oh yeah, it's has the, the old it's the colored 175. It, it's got the supervisor key. Yeah, still used in all construction sites in New York City. <laughs> and gun locks cell towers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, are we going to uh, switch slides back for a second? Sure. Woo! So that was pretty fun, right? That was off to a, we had to put the best person in the good slot at first. Otherwise, it's just a bunch of us up here drinking, and you think that's boring. <laughs> but that was awesome. So yeah, ask Max plenty of questions, either during Q&A, during this, if, or just come down and try it hands-on, because I know you've seen these locks. They're all over. They're hugely popular on like infrastructure jobs, construction site, any place you've got a billion people, and you don't want to give out a ton of like keys. So like, all right, all the plumbers are doing the job today, so give the plumbers the code, and then next week we'll change it, and the electricians come in. Like, these locks are everywhere, and it's astonishing. And the, the part that I really love, and I hadn't thought about, like, I do this shit for a living, right? But Max told me, he's like, yeah, you know, what you do is you, you, the fun part isn't popping the dumbass parking lot lock. It's you pop that, go around the corner to a bar, order a beer, and then decode it. And then you have, what, like, four-digit code that is probably in use all over this facility. And I was like, oh, shit. So, yeah, solid. All right, little project, project stuff. Well, Tool had a fun project, and some people up on this stage were part of this project. How many people know that, well, how many people a couple hopes ago saw Luca Zhao speak about Chinese locks? Right on, so not only did, do we have Chinese lock knowledge, we have locks in China knowledge, because Tool went to China and did some lock picking in China, and none of, I'm, I'm assuming, to a, within a rounding error, none of you got arrested, right? Nope. Awesome. I mean, what was it like? I, 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 was, I was told that four out of the five members had to come back from China. Excellent. But all five came back. We, we, met, we sure exceeded about our me. goals. So I just wanted you all to tell them about uh, what it was like. And it, this is, Hope is a very cool con. I like, every hacker con I could think of besides Hope would be like, it's not a hacker topic. Shut up. Move on. But like, oh, wow, people do shit differently around the world. Maybe, as Americans, we can think about that. So, yeah, that's kind of a hope topic. So what was it like over there? Uh, it, was a, it was a great experience. It wasn't, it was different, but not as different as I would have expected. So um, I think I saw a lot of Euro-shaped cylinders. Mm -hmm. um, because of the hotel we're in, we probably saw stuff that was more standard and manufactured than most of what Lucas has told us about uh, the Chinese locks, where it's kind of like, Oh, a lock maker will pop up and they'll manufacture a bunch of stuff and with their own keyway and then disappear. Vanish. And uh, that factory will start to melt. Oh yeah. Do we have the photo? So I my my HBO stopped working at like two AM. So of course I needed my HBO. So I called down to the help desk uh, to the service and they don't speak English. So we're trying to figure this out. So they send someone up with housekeeping. There's this big plastic white plate with keys all around it. They're not walking around with a master key. They're walking around with a master key ring. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, they didn't have master keying even in this nice hotel. Master and keying is very uncommon in, in other parts of the world. Yeah, they, it, it wasn't even like they were holding it out here and being really cautious. Like, it was sideways, and they were walking around with it. And I'm like, oh, OK. I wonder what's happening with those keys. <laughs> 
What were the um, the attendees like? I mean, was this a new experience for them? Had they ever done any lock picking before? We found one guy. From for the most part, yeah. it was very new to them. It was it it was uh, like nobody came with previous experience, um, and I think it took them a while to warm up to the idea of doing it. Um, like, oh, I'm not going to get in trouble. Mm -hmm. But this one guy showed up, and like. It was like someone showing up to the work the tool village Pelican here. Pelican case. I was his like, own gear. who brought flex cuffs to China? <laughs> and I'm looking around and I'm like, we didn't have these on the first day. <laughs> and, and eventually I'm like, oh, that's not one of our people that brought that. Was he like state security division or what? what, what, what he didn't think? tell us that, but that's kind of what we think. <laughs> right he on. evidently yeah. made it over on the subway with a giant Pelican case and flex cuff. He was very helpful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he translated for us and ran some introduction talks, so we, yeah. we got his yeah, contact yeah. information. So we, yeah, about <laughs> half of our members that went almost were, were fluent. So we had Lucas, we had Char, yeah, and yeah, we had helpers. It was, it was a, I, I didn't get to go. Um, I was in like a Singapore job at the time, I think, but yeah. The translators yeah. that were assigned to us sorry, yeah. left the room because they, yeah. we didn't, we weren't asking them to do anything. There was nothing for them to do. Like, yeah, we had yeah, people. We, we rolled deep. So yeah, that, that was, I really, I mean, this is, again, we're speaking to the choir here, but try to get to events out of your comfort zone. This was the first time that anyone was like, gonna try this in China. And they were like, let's just try to go and see cool shit we can find and go to other events. Like, yeah, tell, what, are, what are some of the most oddball things you found? Well, what I found amusing was Lockpicks grow legs over the weekend, right? What? <laughs> Not a single one grew legs over there. Wow. Wow. None of them walked off. <laughs> not, not a lock, not a tool, nothing. That fish lock you can buy on Amazon. Yeah, well, that, that, yeah. Was, that was what the, the first little run to a market. Lucas got those. Right? Yeah, so, yeah, so Lucas Urban is still our guy. Uh, so he got there early and ran out to a lock market and picked up some interesting things. I think two of those are cross locks um, on either side of the picture. So it's kind of a key that has three, that has four different blades and pins on each side, um, which we don't see here a lot. Maybe in like hotel safes. Yeah, hospitality maybe, safes. Or maybe not. It's the hidden lock usually that's behind hotel. the little press plate. Um, the one next to the, to the right of the fish lock is a smiley face lock mm -hmm. um, with a, um, a floating core. So you can't tension the core normally. Mm -hmm. When you stick a turning tool in, it just spins around. So there are some other techniques, which I don't remember, that you have to do in order to tension that lock so you can then go move the sliders. Um, and the fish lock just kind of looks nice. I think if you move the fin on the side, yeah. That's yeah. where the key, that's the, key that's the key way, way there. It so looks like a warded lock of some sort. Probably. It's a warded or lever. Yeah. So look for, look for oddball stuff at future villages that they, the board authorized a decent enough purchase over there. Like we spent a few hundo in, Thanks, in a made US. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. We, we, had, to, we had to buy some more luggage to oh, bring yeah. some stuff back. <laughs> that was oh. fun. <laughs> You can get a great deal in China on sets of luggage. Be careful, they'll throw it at you yes, to throw. show you that it's not going to break. Yeah. <laughs> like, so so yeah, right next we, to my foot, let me just jump out of the way. We had no idea if it would be a complete train wreck or not. And there's a lot of hacker events that are maybe in their first year, or maybe you're not sure what's going to happen. But I think everyone, and this doesn't just Whoa. go for, for the China event, like, how many people up here have ever been invited to like some event and you're like, boy, this place doesn't have their shit together, but you go <laughs> and it winds up being a thing you liked, you know? Yeah. yeah. Were you going to say something? Okay. No. Uh, no, I'm actually not. I was raising my hand saying, All right, yeah. 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 Like, <laughs> now, one, of the, uh, one of the things here that I should point out that's kind of cool is if you do any traveling and you have a few free seconds, pop into a lock store, pick up a couple of things and bring them to your local tool chapter. Mm -hmm. These kinds of things are unique and they're very cool and that's what we're all about. Right on. So we're gonna we're gonna do some questions. We can the whole the whole time we've, we're just gonna do questions from the audience. We're gonna do questions from Twitter. We we put out the word on Twitter uh, if anybody had questions for us and some people were amazing enough to answer us. So while some of you are coming to a microphone or just waving your hands, we'll just repeat questions. There were, the, you know, we, uh, 
here's here's like an easy like right off the hop, right? We haven't we've been here a lot from this end of the table. Like, what's your favorite lock and why? I'm looking down y'all ways. Uh, I'll bite. All right. Master lock number three, because it makes me feel like I'm not an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Oh. Yeah, Ray. Yeah, I go local. I like the FAMCS because it's completely different from all the other locks, and you can't photograph the key. It's a magnetic coded lock. Absolutely. Any other fun ones? Yeah. Uh, Alloy Protect 2. Ooh, yeah. You just yeah. said that to make Mitch smile. You know, I did. He's the guy down there selling Abloys, <laughs> which we love because they're like our favorite locks. I got a good one. I like the pop locks. Oh, okay. Rainer okay. Pop. Yeah. 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 If you're not pop, P-O-P-P, -P -P, pop lock. Uh, there's a German Rainer Pop who makes these crazy puzzle locks. You may have heard of puzzle locks. They're, they're usually kind of little trinkets that are cheap. Um, not nothing, pop locks are not. They are gorgeous feats of engineering. And they're always limited runs. And if you can find them, or if you know someone who might have them in a collection, try them out. They're, they're unbelievably well made. And there's no instructions anywhere. Yep. Uh, probably my favorite is the Corbin Emhart. Oh, which yeah. Which is a really, really unusual lock that very unfortunately got sued off the market by Medico uh, because they both used the princip uh, principle involving simultaneously lifting and rotating the pins. Uh, the remarkable thing about Emhart, though, is that the key, uh, the pins actually are linked together in like a chain. So when you assemble the lock, you actually have to take all the pins, line them up, link them together, and then you drop the entire chain of pins into the, the, uh, the chamber. Yeah, the uh, and yeah, it, it's like a tongue it and groove. Yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, I do have a couple of photos of an M heart cylinder that's been disassembled uh, that I'm using in my workshop tomorrow. E M H A R D T, I believe. Uh, yeah. Just M heart. M heart. E M H A R T. Yep. Yeah. Google, Google photos. They're amazing. Matt Blaze, I think, took some up close photos and other people. Yeah. Have, yeah it's, that's a really cool. That's an awesome answer. And I like that it has. It's not just a design based answer, but it has like weird intricacies of. Turmoil and legal and lawsuits and all kind of crazy bullshit. Yeah. Um, oh look, someone asked us, "What are your favorite <laughs> lock be? picks?" That's right. From oh, what are your favorite locks I'll to what's your favorite pick? Right here. Oh, what's that? Oh wait. You guys want to stand up and ask? Oh, yeah. Right Hi. Uh, yes. Our lock picks we like choose and like really love like crazy. Like, are they like describing who we are? Kind of like horoscopes. Maybe I'm joking. I hate horoscopes. <laughs> so yeah, do like do people look like their pets? Do do people feel like their lock picks? I I do, because I used to be very precise about a lot of things till I realized I could bowl my way through life, which is why I reach for the tool rakes now. Yeah, yeah, I rake the shit out of everything because I'm super lazy. Yeah, because uh, it's gonna work most of the time. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Or Laziness. you can customize your pins like Anne and put glitter on them. <laughs> so minimal effort is what we're shooting for. Laziness is the mother of invention. That happens to be my personal favorite pick. Uh, it's fairly well used. It is a uh, Peterson hook number one in their 18 thousandths uh, thickness. And I find it is just uh, an incredible tool. It's really thin. Yeah, it's, so it's, but the nice thing about it is that it is very thin, but it still has most of the stiffness of their 25 thousandths or 23 thousandths uh, tools. So it doesn't bend, it gives you, it's very sturdy feeling and gives, for me, I think, great feedback. Uh, and it's thin enough that I can actually fit that entirely vertically in uh, an American lock key way, mm -hmm. which is normally something that you can't do. You have to sort of work in at odd angles. It's kind of uncomfortable with this. I'm able to just go straight up and down without. Yeah. Anybody, uh, on anybody down there? The locks, right the locks part. Oh, what do you got? Glitter picks. What? Oh, yeah. It's, it's, uh, yeah, why not? <laughs> Anne won't get up here, but I'm still going to show her stuff off. <laughs> I didn't bring my goodies. Uh, my mouse. You know, mine are down. Oh, yes. You were picking with the stars. Oh. Thank you. Oh, my God. That's gorgeous. Oh, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. No, no, no. This is like Scotland's uh, workshop. <laughs> nice. It's sparkly. That is so cool. But I God think damn. We, we can all say if someone uses a half diamond regularly, you're a weirdo, obviously. 
<laughs> any last come and have we been are, are there any like hands in the crowd like we we will repeat your question it doesn't have to be about picks or locks oh, yeah we got one in the back there. come on make your way up make your way up or just shout be american <laughs> i demand attention what tap lock t-a-p-p -P. yeah they're yeah, they're trying to make a name yeah Anybody not under NDA with tap lock? Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so. I'm just kidding. No, who doesn't who doesn't know um, about tap lock? The the, the biometric uh, padlock? Yeah, they they're brand off to a rough start. No, they're they're good unless you have a screwdriver. And, uh, <laughs> Nobody has screwdrivers. It's still secure if you don't have one. Right? Yeah, they're impenetrable unless you have a screwdriver. So. They have, it's a niche market. That's what they're shooting for. <laughs> but that was their official statement, right? Yeah. That's yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's still no, safe no, that's, unless up, somebody has a screwdriver. Uh, their line was, if we are, we cannot be open unless you have a screwdriver. So, I mean, how many of us have ever seen a screwdriver or have one with an accent? What's, so. what's a screwdriver? Right. Isn't that that like orange juice and vodka? <laughs> how does that open it? Oh, oh. Like yes. We, everyone, everyone, give us one of these. Wait, yeah. we, so, so if someone, oh, this is awesome. Wait, someone holds the plate up. What am I doing then? Very good. My wife oh, no. became a Catholic late in life. I left Catholicism early in life. I see. Is that Patrick? Yes, it is. Oh my God! I'm amazing. Right on. What's up? So, um, those of us who are implanted with NFC chips and stuff like that. Boom. Who has a biohacked um, implant? Not a lot of hands. All right, go on. I, I'm I'm frustrated at the lack of good quality NFC like residential locks in the market. Any thoughts, yes. feelings, rants? reasons why you think that is uh yeah i'm i'm gonna give if bobak were here he would give a much more comprehensive answer for those who don't know nfc or near field is basically contactless smart card uh which is uh, there's a lot of mixed up and muddied terms but it is a high frequency protocol so it's not your low frequency prox indala like busted old bullshit uh, NFC as a protocol is very extensible and does cool things but a lot of that market is super tied up with hid and HID doesn't like to license uh, in the same way that NXP. So my fare, uh, NXP, NXP Semiconductor from Germany, if you have like a hotel key card uh, and it's ever wireless, like con you know, not a mag stripe, uh, that's always gonna be NXP, basically to the live long day. Because NXP and my fare is in everything. You don't see I-Class or a lot of other NFC based technologies as much outside of like co corporate enterprise solutions. So that's a big part of it. Uh, it's more expensive to kind of interact with those systems. Those systems have key management that's handled differently. Uh, for instance, a lot of the a lot of the like contactless home locks, some that use MyFair, in fact, because they're they're using MyFair. Like MyFair's out there. It's super, like MyFair Ultralight, super cheap. What they're not actually doing is the full handshake and MyFair applications pages. They're doing shit like authenticating by CSID or card card ID, card serial number. So to do, NF, to do contactless right is to kind of use, well, either good MyFair or to use NFC. That means expensive. That means probably not res, uh, for not residential. But I, I see Ray does way more shit on this. Can you fill us in here? Yeah, I think the question was, why is there so much shit, shit out there? And yeah. I think the, the easy answer is because it all looks the same. So if I have a contactless lock, you can't see that's a difficult key, that's a simple key, that's a complicated mechanism. And you also can't just take the lock apart and see, oh, they've done it very good, that looks tight tolerances. So it's just easy to get away with a shitty lock, unless some really, someone really goes into it and finds the vulnerabilities. But that's the big problem of all these electronic locks I've, yeah. I've looked into, that you can't judge the quality by looking at it. You really have to take it apart, and we're not free workers for the industry, so not many people do it. And from China, there comes so much uh, stuff. I, I think it's basically just, impossible you know, to keep track of. It's not just NFC locks; it's NFC anything. It's, it's not just NFC like we it's electronic. We have Bluetooth locks. We have yet. so much yeah, silly do. Bluetooth locks, and this fingerprint lock, and yeah, basically all this electronic stuff has no, the same problem. 
even even in the commercial sector now, uh, Bluetooth low energy yeah. is very very rapidly replacing uh, the few the few <laughs> NFC equipped locks that were on the market for uh, that were made by reputable brands and were actually fairly decent. Now their new versions are pretty much all Bluetooth low energy. And uh, who knows what they're doing. Right. And again, that's a convenience factor, right? Like, yeah. who's going to adopt it if you need to carry an extra credential? Everyone has a smartphone. If right. you sell something, there are enterprise security solutions now that are considering moves to BLE because everyone has their phone on them. Not everyone remembers their wallet or their car. I, I happen to know of at least hotels? two or three companies uh, in New York City right now that are that using Bluetooth low energy equipped yeah. uh, locks uh, in place of or in addition to their old existing HID mm -hmm. uh, card reader systems. All of the big four on the internet, the big four brands of the internet that you know, like every one of them has yep. a working group internal that's deciding is it time to get rid of badges? Because that's been a debate in the industry for years. Can't we just do something else? Can't we do bio? Can't we do face? And now that smartphones have become so prevalent, that's the new hotness, and you're going to hear Steve, more but then and more of this. How will people sneak into buildings if they can't have a badge to fake? Oh, we have ways. <laughs> <laughs> I know you have ways. There's, there's lots of other ways. Yeah. And we also got uh, some litigation that's out there, and some laws like uh, the UCDP, uh, which is uh, going to restrict how employers can use bio uh, information. So that's something they're not going away tomorrow. That's yeah. for sure. In general, the, the best answer, which you've been hearing from most people, is remember, it, none of this exists in a vacuum. Um, the idea of what's awesome in a lab and super secure doesn't always translate to what's feasible for a marketplace. And that, I mean, Christ, that's, that's the story of everything that somebody's hacked on and broken is because, why is this so dumb? Well, because the secure version was on the market and failed because no one used it. Or and that's, because it cost $500. Yeah, nothing per, exists in a vacuum. Door. Also, the RFID industry is still of the mindset where it's easier to sue away disclosures than actually fix anything. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. truth. The, these words are correct words. Yeah. We'll take a couple more questions and then a couple more stories. And are you guys enjoying this kind of free form format? Is this fun? Yeah. Hey, does anybody need a drink? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoever asks That's good questions, down. when you're done your question, walk you this up way. Here. We have cups. Yeah, we'll so. give you stuff. We got free lock picks. Yeah. We got another question. Go ahead. Yep. So I actually have kind of a two part but closely related question. All right. So the first one is um, on the topic of shit locks that are out there. Um, is there any residential grade um, smart lock that you guys don't think is a piece of crap? Um, and second of all, is in the residential space, is there any locks um, using keys that you feel is practically unpickable or unpickable? Yeah, possibly. I mean, okay. like, there's, so, there's, yeah. So the first part is smart lock that's, that's not shit. Right. <laughs> for um, res, especially. For res. For servicing right. that market is hard. Like, how smart do you want to go? <laughs> so, so, so basically something where you don't have to use a key or... Right. Um, Right. If your smart lock connects to the internet, you're a fucking dummy. Exactly. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's just All right. that's immediately a bad sign. So specifically, it's a bad like idea. That. So yeah. specifically, like something that's NFC, something that's Bluetooth, mm -hmm. something of that. Yeah, nature. something. What I'll, I'll, I like to call those the relative from out of town convenience lock. Right. Where you're not dealing with like keys because you're not a landlord. Um, honestly, does anyone else up here have you ever tried Samsung smart lock? No, Samsung's, Samsung's are good. Board. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's the only one I like. I haven't had to do had to deal with service. No, uh, someone's shouting. No, oh, shit. This will come to blows. So if yeah. you if you change out the secondary, what was Wait, that? What? The mean time to failure, your one failure according to them is one to three years. Wait, what? Three years is longer than any relationship I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's a long time. But. So with those smart locks, like the problem is, is that there's always a secondary lock to open. I'm sorry. Yep. What, what can't even high horse? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is that's a valid point. So from the factory, there a lot of a lot of the electronic locks, even even a good one, might come with a terrible like rim cylinder that's pickable. Right. So my friend got one, and it's like that touchpad where you have to touch like four random numbers, and then you punch your code in. And is what he was. He was like, I bet you can't pick this open. And he was like, touch the pad, and he like 
you got to punch these codes, and you got to dial all these numbers. And then he had just a basic schleg underneath it. They came <laughs> with the lock. He paid $400, and he got a basic schleg lock. And I just picked that open, and I was like, that, your door's open. And he's like, you can't attack like that. You have to do the digital. And I was like, your door's open. <laughs> <laughs> your door's open. More cybers, more cybers. It's the cybers, yeah. Yeah, but I, I really would stay away from recommending any electronic lock currently because basically you don't have the source code, nobody gives you the source code, you can't look into it like in a mechanical lock. So really use it for convenience, but if you want high security, I think you only can say which locks are not hacked yet, not which yeah. are unhackable. I well, mean, that, that leads to the second, point as the, well, the second part of the question, right? What is your favorite mechanical type cylinder? Even it, one that is available for residential. I think there. we have a common answer here, right? <laughs> Might be. On, on three, shall we? One, two, three. The Pro Abloy? Protec. Protec. Yeah, yeah, Protec. Yeah. The, the Protec is what I use, but I wanted to know if there's something else out there. Yeah. As, as I, I said, mean, the FMCS is the second one, which is hard to pick, probably. But the same as the Protec, it's hard to pick. We can't say for sure it's impossible because people are discussing ways. So, yeah. but uh, those two. The, the Protec? Yeah, who's Go got down a Protec key? Just throw it under the camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have a, yeah. All right, Go we in. actually have Go Protec in. keys. Yeah, show your key. Yeah. Very clever <laughs> idea. <laughs> All right, everybody start <laughs> taking pictures Spare now. Right. No pictures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the effort. That's okay. HD camera, right? As long as it doesn't get on the internet. <laughs> Oh, that's MCS. Yeah, that's the MCS. Nobody's gonna be watching. That you can show. Take all the pictures yeah. you want. Uh, ain't gonna do anything. What? Oh. We're oh yeah. We got those two. <laughs> Change the monitor. <laughs> Come on. There we, there we go. So that's the other MCS. Uh, four magnetic discs in there. Each face of the magnet, uh, the polarity is aligned differently. So this side it might be one way, and over here it's the other way. Just to, so what he's saying, this is not like north, south, north, and this is like south, south, north. These are helically charged magnets. They have just, imagine a trivial pursuit wheel with zones of magnetism that are all oriented in a, in a pie. Yeah. Are, are there eight, there are eight zones per each of those There's wheels? There's four on each face and they, they relate but not perfectly to one another. Yeah. Each, each. Each, each no, rotor has eight positions. Right, so there's four oh, here eight. that are different eight. zones. Eight. Well, there's eight Sorry? positions, but they're, so yeah. these four are different than these four, and each of them have eight possible orientations. Yeah. So a magnetized lockpick will not help you open it. Not really. Bobak no. swears somebody has, has manipulated one open. It I, yeah, it has been done. A couple of people talking about uh, attempts and experimental tool designs for it. I do not personally know of any that have been particularly successful. The yes. Germans did a, a fake key. They did a makeup key once. Right? Yeah, you can copy. It, for a long time, it has said it's hard yes. to copy the key. That's not true. You can copy the key with relatively usual measures. And the other thing is that there are people trying to pick it. They possibly succeeded on some locks. So, but this is very special. So there are like three or four people in the world who claim they picked it. So that's as close to unpickable as you'll get with any lock. Yeah, but putting this uh, putting this kind of lock in a uh, hollow door or leaving a side window open is a bad idea. <laughs> for, <laughs> for, uh, the MCS? 150 you know, or something? 200? Uh, about 200. 200 I think dollars? Yeah. Cylinder. Yeah. Uh, you can actually go check, check uh, with Mitch from Security Snobs downstairs in the vendor area. He, I bought uh, mine from him last year. Hey Especially Mitch, wait for the crap. Dollars. Yeah, Mitch's over there. There's also right the there. <laughs> that you can get. It's just a magnetic one that has no bidding. The only problem is, is that the magnets fall off over time, like less yeah. than a year. Uh, so the there, magnets yeah. fall there off are the other, magnet There are <laughs> other issues with the Miwa locks, particularly the older ones from the 80s and early 90s, uh, where because they were dealing with magnets, they wanted to make sure that they used nothing that could get jammed up with the magnets. So they used plastic. Mm -hmm. Load-bearing load components of that lock were plastic. So really just a really big screwdriver. Crank the thing over, just like the old uh, uh, quick set smart keys. Yeah, first oh, the master key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The really Super big screwdriver. Yeah. <laughs> we realized David on the, the internet asked the same question. Hopefully this is, has hit some of that, but it's, it's never just the simplest answer, right? It's never like, oh, the best lock ever because everyone thinks it's undestroyable. But like, yes, that's going to be the $100 more than you want to spend solution. Or it's going to be not compatible with the rest of your house. 
Yeah. You yeah. have Primus. There's some Primus cutaways we're going to show in a bit. Like, I honestly like Primus. I, my buddy Drew hates Primus because he's like, he's the Primus whisperer. Like, he can wreck Primus systems because he's one of the five people that can. But it's they're backwards compatible with bullshit Schlage, and it yep. makes a lot of clients. I mean, you've got to have clients that you've been recommending Primus to. Yeah, no, it's it's a very, in a lot of ways, it's a very good lock. It easily retrofits existing uh, residential and sh commercial Schlage uh, lock sets. Not to mention that a lot of other manufacturers make their uh, hardware compatible with Schlage style cylinders. Uh, so you can relatively easily just swap out the core just as if you were rekeying the lock except you're going from uh, your cheap little ten twenty dollar Schlage cylinder to a much uh, more secure and much more difficult to manipulate uh, cylinder. But it's really looking at the total picture as Steve kind of and some of the others have started to um, suggest because I've had people sit there and go like, oh, how good is my lock? And I would look to my right, and I'm on the ground floor. I'm like, hey, you keep that window locked? And they're like, no, I'm always arguing with so-and-so about it. I'm like, yeah, they're coming in through the window. Like, <laughs> yeah, you can yeah. put the best lock on there ever, or like, <coughs> the door unlocked. They're probably going to try that window because they can hide behind the bushes and all that other stuff. So get like a good lock, not like the best lock. And also, like, make sure you lock your windows, depending on where you are, maybe get an alarm system, make sure your door isn't, like, paper thin with nothing in the middle. Yeah, it's, it's really about bars. the whole thing. <laughs> right. You lock your door layers. at the end of the night. Exactly. Layers, All exactly. Layers. Yep. They also use the Schleck Primus on Grand Central. All the yeah. locks yes. on Grand Central. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. All oh. Caesar properties are Grand yeah. 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 Primus. One of the good techniques also that my uh, Click was telling me about a couple of years ago, if you're actually paranoid like he was when he was here in New York, well, you had uh, six locks on the door, or was five. it five? Five. five. Yeah. Locks. Now, here's the trick to this, okay? There's five locks on the door, but he only locks two. Good luck. <laughs> it was the same, same where That's I awesome. live. We used to have three locks on my door, and we'd have a guest come over and give them the locks, the, the keys to the locks. They don't know if they're locking or unlocking because they're not all going the same direction. So I hear sure click, click, that's click, from click, a guy click outside. Yeah. <laughs> they keep locking and unlocking each one. They don't know what they're doing. Gives you more time to start loading the gun if you're not expecting. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> we'll Absolutely. do a couple more at the mic and then we'll show you some more shit. What's up? I'm looking for stories of memorable lock picking fails, tools exploding, etc. Tools exploding. Tools exploding. Uh, Man, uh, we're, we're making the wrong smoking. kind of tools. I don't think I've had anything explode. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I've had locks had explode, locks explode but not the tools Mike explode. Idol's got something. Yeah, uh, probably the most memorable for me uh, was actually earlier this year at uh, Lockfest. Uh, I was sitting down, we have one of those uh, timed head-to-head -head lock picking games, and this thing is just, what was it, a bunch of quick set uh, yeah. deadbolt cylinders in there, and I uh, start off with uh, like, oh yeah, it's a quick set, it's going to be really easy, I'll just start by raking it. About uh, 12 seconds in, I feel a snap, and I come away with just the handle in my hand, and the entire head of the rake jammed deep into the lock cylinder. I'm like, oh, uh, yeah, okay, that's going to be a bit tricky because <laughs> I left uh, my like professional work kit uh, locked up upstairs, <laughs> and that's where all my extractors are. <laughs> So I think I finished that, that round with a time of about six minutes because I had to go upstairs to my room, get, get my luggage, come back down, fix the lock, and then pick it again. That's still a shockingly respectable time for like, you're hauling ass. Yeah. I'm really disappointed I missed six days. Thing, <laughs> Who, anybody else br br busted up some tools or anything? So this isn't so much the lock exploding as injury to the person who was picking. <laughs> all right. So sleep. How'd you hurt yourself? Not. Oh, it wasn't me. Oh, all right. Uh huh. So Bob. Every, I'm going to assume. For a friend. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to for a friend. So I'm going to assume everyone here has picked a lock at some point, either here or just somewhere. Mm -hmm. So you know that you want to apply gentle pressure on the turning tool. Not as much that your skin gets discolored, or in the case of one person I was teaching, the metal of the turning tool is cutting into their finger, and I have to get a first aid kit. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. 
Somebody's got some anger issues. Got some Kalon picks. <laughs> so, so sharp some shit. When I was uh, when I was doing the class er earlier to, to today, I was just telling them says if you see your skin turning white around that turning tool or blood, you're turn using turning it too, too hard. <laughs> Anyone else? I mean, I've had yeah. locks go flying. Um, <laughs> the the first time I got back from locks? a training class, and I, I was like, oh, I can totally pick my desk lock, right? Bad idea. <laughs> what do we tell you in, in, in our intro? Bad idea. Two. Uh, so the whole thing popped right out, and I was not expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, <laughs> I want to go home. He doesn't own that lock. So, uh, so I, I just took some scotch <laughs> tape, and I shoved the core <laughs> back in there. <laughs> and I'm like, I'll deal with this tomorrow, right? <laughs> it's just my desk. Uh, yeah. yeah but so who, I found who, out who about chain scrapers. <laughs> huh? Shh. Who owned that lock? Uh, <laughs> no comment. You did after that. It was <laughs> after that you break yeah. it, you bought it. I don't know, officer. Is yeah, he up definitely here? Definitely not wearing a tool shirt. No. Huh? Can we get uh, another question, please? So this is multi-parted. Um, what was the first lock you ever lock picked, and what was your motivation behind doing that? And then what was the last one you picked for the first time? Oh wait, what was, what was the last? Yeah. So like the last wait, wait, wait. something the you've never one? done before. The what? first lock you've ever picked. The last first. one you tried to pick. Yeah. The first time. Yeah. Successfully. First lock I ever picked. Master lock number three. Was my apartment door at 3 a.m. Um, this Were you four, sober? This was the fourth one. <laughs> I lived in California at the time, and I went to take my garbage out at, at 3 a.m. and. <laughs> <laughs> like you do, and I took it out, I, I dropped it off, and I came back, and my door like automatically locked, and I left the keys inside. But not so I picks. sat on YouTube for like an hour, like researching. <laughs> That's how to when pick you check the windows. <laughs> <laughs> windows were all locked. Is this an apartment? It was an apartment. I was on the you second floor. You can call like the. Yes, yeah. you but probably this is a can. Story. Keep going. Keep going. So I ended up using an insurance card for my medical insurance, and I shimmed the lock open, and I felt like a god. I was like, I have opened this lock, I am amazing, and then I was like, wait a second, I'm not secure at all. <laughs> <laughs> I just used a piece of plastic to open this door. Anybody could do that. Man, so we heard smoke I, legend a lot, I wanna hear smoke. Yeah, I got one of those. It happened when I was younger. Uh, I used to leave my keys at home as a, young teenager and my mom's apartment building at the time was so crappy that you could shim the lock no problem but we got it me and my brother got it to the level where you could just bump it with your butt and you could get it. um yeah that was like 12 13 years old you know just bumping it what uh, city was that do you from new york it was uh maryland oh maryland yeah maryland said maryland 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 um i think mine was Handcuffs. Oh, well, there's a story here. Uh, getting kinky. Mine as so, well. End of story. Allegedly, they said I was shoplifting at the Tower Records in South Street in Philadelphia. Allegedly. 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 That, that's, that's a very detailed allegation. It's, it's right? Like, the tape was lying. So that's when I learned how handcuffs work. And um, that's when I learned the same day. Wow, handcuffs are really fucking simple to pick. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be clear. It's all hypothetical. All right, no come, on, come on, Deviant. Allegedly. We know you got As a story. board member, I'll point out you were not a member of Tool at the time. <laughs> See? Yeah. Oh, here's the disclaimer. What would allegedly happen after one picks handcuffs? Oh, you fucking run away. <laughs> <laughs> allegedly. Oh, allegedly. Oh. <laughs> but, like, Allegedly, of course. Allegedly. Yes. All right. Uh, once, once again, Tool has two rules. Right. <laughs> this is before Tool. Don't be breaking both of them. <laughs> you don't know. Run very don't fast. Be lost, you rely on. Yeah. So. Well, our rules for handcuffs are consent, and I did not consent, so I thought I was okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, but the second rule is don't use that to escape police custody. <laughs> I don't, I don't think like Tower like Records you know. police. Oh, yeah, police. no, that's, that's true. All right, look, and it was long <laughs> enough ago that checking Tower badges Rogers here. Power. <laughs> Wait, there are Tower Records don't currently police. have police no. powers. Were these handcuffs made of plastic? <laughs> <laughs> plastic and a little bit of uh, aluminum. Right. Uh, there we go. Okay. So I have answers for both parts. Do it. Uh, the first part, the first lock that I ever picked, um, was a very simple warded cabinet lock. 
It's the the kind that has no real complex bidding or anything, and I think I managed to pick it with a popsicle stick. This was in uh, this was in pre-K. <laughs> and uh, the the, All right, everybody the teacher to had locked had locked themselves out of the art supply cabinet, and. Uh, I, I've always liked being helpful, so <laughs> I just scrounged around for some bits and bobs off the floor, and uh, after a couple of minutes of poking things around, I've seen what grown-ups do. Yeah, goes in the line. I figured out, you know, more or less how it works, and okay, we can do art time now. <laughs> what, what, what kind of grown-ups did you see doing that? <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in Brooklyn, you know. Uh, oh, there you and go. Okay. The last. The most recent thing that I picked for the first time uh, was a pair of uh, Smith and Wesson uh, high secu uh, the mm, Smith and yeah. Wesson 100 Cuff Max yeah. uh, handcuffs, which are uh, a Smith and Wesson a pair of standard Smith and Wesson Model 100s retrofitted with a uh, driverless cam lock version. Of so the, the Medico uh, M3. Oh, no, the Medico, okay. Yeah, I have the I have the Medico M3. Uh, they do also make an Asadesmo. Yeah, the version. Medico you can pick with uh, with the diamond, right? With your most yeah. Right. Uh, actually, I, I yeah. use um, I use that same short hook. Uh, but the Smith and Wesson cuff, if you watch the Hope talk from like six years ago, <laughs> oh yes, no, you have can. a bypass. So <laughs> yeah, who's in that Bro. talk? Yeah. All right. If everybody's drinking, the first, the first lock right. I ever picked was the door lock of my sister's room, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 just, whoa, whoa. just, just, hey, what? What? Huh? just uh, to annoy yeah. her. This, on, but okay. the, the fun story right. of the part is that my father is quite uh, fit with building stuff, and this lock is still the only Absolutely. inner house door lock in my parents' house, which has a high security ABO cylinder in it now. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. So people always wonder, why do you have an outer door lock inside your house? But <laughs> she so feels better that way. <laughs> that story sounded out. I was it, like it, seven. It, it, it took a turn. It, it, it took a turn. Like it's all right. So I'm really curious. We're going to keep doing questions in the audience as well. But did anyone bring an actual lock to show off? Or yeah, do we have any challenges? To Don't that? throw it. Throw it up here. No. Throw it up. It's fine. Just throw it up here. Can we text your phone better. while you're showing? If you have a photo, photo. one hand. I see it. If you don't, there. If you have a lock, we won't. Oh, no. Anybody on the live stream, DM Avi right now. Yeah, just right come now. on up. <laughs> Wait, I have a photo of the same. All right, look. Get your photo, and we get this lock. Look, um, Iberico doesn't count. All right, <laughs> we're already <laughs> jealous. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. As you're coming up, do you like bourbon, scotch, rye, or aquavit? Bourbon. All right. Beer? There you go. Yeah. Oh, you All right, head with scotch. What do you got? Am I allowed to be anything special? I just from thrift store. From a thrift store. Okay. Get scotch from deep. So, it's a tough whoop, lock. Where's our, where's our, there's our can. Oh, tough lock. There we go. Oh, there okay. We go. Yeah, tell me all I can about it. Oh, I know that. Okay. So, I mean, this is, I mean, it's, a, it's an imitator to the American 700, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Yep. It's hardened. <laughs> oh, right. They're not so you know, secure. If you that's, see usually, that, you know, that's usually a pretty good sign that it's in fact not hardened at all. Yeah. <laughs> if you see the word harden, that means uh, uh, no. Hit it harder. That's yeah. what it means. Yes, yeah, our friend always said it's easier to print hardened on a body than to produce yeah. a hardened body. Right. <laughs> so that is not an American Chinese. Way. That is. a really wide keyway. I'm wondering yeah. if that accepts a couple of blanks. Uh, <laughs> do we get a bunch of keys? We can just yeah, try. That looks like an M1 or an M11. It's not an M1, M11 probably. Does anyone want to try to pick it while we're talking? Yeah, sure. Got some. All right. I'm pass it over there. Pa pass it around. Uh, where did you? Where, oh. What's your name, man? Wait, you've already got your tools. Jackson. Now. Jackson. Is this, this your first hope? You've been to hope before? It's my third hope. Solid, man. Nice. Where are you from? Uh, Illinois. Illinois. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I live here now. I'm going to go back to Illinois. Groovy. Yeah. yeah! Too crowded. Too crowded. And we almost like. Open. There we go. Oh! <laughs> All right, Jackson. We're done. Four, four seconds. I was counting. Four seconds. Thank you, Jackson. Solid. 
any security pins in there at all? Uh, I, I don't know. I just dragged it with my snake. So, <laughs> so if there are, but they don't I actually don't work. think there were. But, but it was hardened. <laughs> All right, I'm going to hand you my phone. You don't swipe right. You don't this swipe left. Very, I feel so meta picture. now. No, so, actually, so this is in a bathroom I found in Spain. Uh, like, <laughs> oh, so this is from a bathroom I was at in Spain by, like, the sea. Um, so, like, I was really curious. And, yeah, that's the um, actual lock in the um, inside once you're actually inside the bathroom. Yeah, I have no idea how it works. So I was like, ooh. Fascinating. That's wow. That's no, it's not number one, but, yeah, whatever. But yeah, isn't that super weird? How many pictures? It has to be. Yeah, oh, so, I mean, I took, I mean, it's the same photo, like, over a billion times, yeah. yeah. Sure so I have no idea how it works, honestly. So that's, like, my first, like, whoa. Are you sure there's no duct tape in there? Oh, really? Oh, shucks, really? Yeah. What? Oh, yeah, there's no tailpiece on oh, it. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. I, I was asking if there's duct tape in there or something. So how is it held together? <laughs> so, oh, man, my bathroom's not secured. <laughs> Shit. From, from, the, from the look of that, uh, it originally was probably fitted with some sort of gear to engage with those yeah. holes yeah. Uh, in that bolt. And that broke, and they just decided, uh, we don't really yeah. need to worry about it. Not important. Yeah. Who needs a lock at bathroom door? Yeah. Well, really quick, we, um, we weren't sure how many locks would show up, so we threw a few slides in. There's this really fun lock that so this slate slaymaker. yeah slate yeah. and slaymaker company oh, yeah. they changed names a couple times i i love uh, now every, all credit goes to a fellow named macgyver on the lock picking 101 forums who put all these photos up um you probably know him better than i because i don't idle in the forums but i saw this post and i was like oh god i have to buy one and you saw this post and you're like i have to buy one <laughs> so the but the, the bia by the way uh is the bureau of industrial alcohol you'll see on a lot of these locks this is when during prohibition you were allowed to make alcohol for industrial purposes, and then it would be de denatured if you had, but like, there was this whole control of alcohol going on. So it's a nice, you know, environmental cover, slide cover to get the, you know, the big heavy yeah. lever lock in there. Yeah, lever, lever key, nice through hole shackle, so it's got yeah. a nice throw. But when the lock is open, you can, you can cleave open this front plate. The whole front plate comes open. And you're like, well, what's this? Is this for servicing? Is that, you know, this is, you can see, it's still just the keyway, right? But there's, there's these holes and there's these little spikes on the, on the plate that pops up. This is a seal lock. Yep. So a paper seal, from a actual stamp, like it's not tacky on the back, but much in the way the government has always, if you like firearms or liquor, they love their tax stamps, right? You like our stamps. Yeah, yeah like government loves stamps, it's our right? Jam. <laughs> so they would print the, and you could see not only is the stamp, they were different colors, so different series. The numbers were, were over this multiple spots. Those teeth actually punch right through and grab the stamp. And then when you shut the lock under the shutter, it's a piece of paper. And you have to bust through the paper to, to use anything, to use the key, to use picks if you try to. And it's a really cool solution. And as like you don't see them anymore because they're impractical for a number of reasons. I mean, you're gonna get paper tied up in the lock eventually, and it's a type of key that no one services anymore. It's not rekeyable. So there's a lot of reasons in the market why. And I think not the used. prohibition also ended in this. Yes, country. prohibition ended. Yeah. 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 Like, we're, we're bringing God. it back. We're bringing it back. It's gonna I'll drink to that. Right. <laughs> How does that uh, stand up to rain? That's, uh, that's does great. anyone have any stories of like an actual? How would you actually try to get anything in there? I don't. Like datagram and the MFPs, man. Like, how the fuck would they try to fuck with this thing? Uh, they oh. would reprint the seal. Reprint. Yeah, <laughs> try to reprint <laughs> the seal. Your, that's your best bet. I would break with the break window. Temper proof that's challenge. <laughs> oh, are you yeah. the bypass from above or something? But as far as like these, the there's so many old designs that are out there now, and I mean they're gorgeous. And the one you found is even better. On like every now and then, you'll find cool shit on eBay. Uh, and then squelch will bit a bit against you, and you won't get it. <laughs> but absolutely, they there are lock collections are really fun, and I used to like look for interesting things, and then it got way too expensive. I don't so anymore. Pass this one. Yeah. yeah, pass it down. Pass, yeah, pass squelch it. Jones. Squelch. You run lock squelch. 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 All your locks. Come on. Come on. For those in the back, he's like, I used to pick a lot of locks, and then I sold my most of my lock collection. He's like, then I bought a Jeep Cherokee. It's like, yeah, locks. Like, you got some really. There's some. Some of our friends have way gorgeous collections of stuff. Does it? 
Mm. I appreciate that. It's too good. I appreciate it. Bro. Also, if you nobody would, follows Squelch Town yeah. on Twitter, you should. You should. Yeah. You should follow Squelch Town. Especially because he posts like the eBay things, and he's like, hey, has anybody seen this before? And then, like, I'm sure he's already bought it. It's sold <laughs> out. <laughs> like, hey, medical cam locks for like $2. And you're like, well, it's, it's that's crazy. great, but like, I was working, and like, now they're gone. <laughs> But do follow yeah, that was him. Kind of my fault. He's always got like he always posts like lock deals from eBay. Yeah, and we're not saying that because he's here. Like you know, he's not paying us for it. But <laughs> they've been oh, he's not paying you guys for it. Yeah. They've been standing a while. Out. Even if you don't have a lock, we'll take oh, one shit. more, and then we're gonna then Ray's gonna do a demo about some uh, cybery locks of crypto, right? <laughs> but shout it out. Can't hear you. Louder. Speak up. Oh, oh. AV guy, turn the crowd mic on. Thing on? Way to go, Aiden. All right, quick question. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, the, what, what do you know about the old Presto locks with the with the dials? Ooh, Presto lock. Anybody? It's the four four dials on yeah. the sides. Four dials, but on one side you see a round bezel around it, flat. You see a long shackle. Uh, yeah, that is actually also uh, Presto. Like Sesame is another uh, sub brand of the Corbin cabinet lock. They've been making that same design since at least the 1950s. Uh, they now that brand is largely used for TSA uh, luggage locks. What is the key? Um, they are also another uh, combination lock that you can decode without tools uh, in most cases. Uh, basically, you just pull on the shackle and you turn each wheel. Usually, the wheel furthest away from the shackle. Uh, will bind first, and you just turn it until you hear a little, until you feel a little sort of pop. Yeah, they they, they yeah. pretty much all either have a gate or a flat that something needs to pass through or fall down onto, so you can start to tension it and figure it out, or you can look through. Uh, there was one TSA lock where I was like, "Huh, oh, I'm having trouble with this," and I took it out of the cup holder in my car one morning before getting coffee, and I'm like, "Well, oh, hey, I can see right through it here." Because the sunlight was shining all the way through, and I'm like, all right, well, now I've found the marker. Um, there was another lock someone handed me today that was flat and had dials on the side. Um, and yeah, just look either with a flashlight and pull the wheel to the side um, for something unique on the wheel there, or use a piece of feeler gauge to try to figure that out. That's really this fucking heavy though. Yeah, I mean, how much of hacking is either pulling the curtain to see what's behind that the world's not supposed to see, or stressing the system and make it behave in a way it's not supposed to behave? Like, that's lock sport in a nutshell in so many ways. Pretty much. Yeah. Can we, um, can we talk with Ray for a little bit right now? You can. Who would like to hear from Ray, who came all the way across the pond? Bye. Woo! Anyone here from Ray? Now, I know I had raised slides, but are they in the wrong spot? I think, oh yeah, I put them uh, a little bit further in. Give me one second. Oh, I should drink. Someone give me more of my bourbon. And I'll just jump back. There's no key. Somebody give him a straw. Right here. Yeah. 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 All right. First, yeah. Ready? I'm going to hand you this okay. uh, click matic Big button. Mm -hmm. Big button. Okay. So this is obviously not the no key. It's the dock and bone because I wanted to start with a simple thing. So this is another, uh, like two years ago, I talked shortly about electronic lock picking and I still can recommend go into it because as we had heard earlier the industry is producing crap all over the world so open these things analyze them this thing is like eighty dollars or something using mobile phone application everything and if you look closer you see it's basically spring-loaded in the center so this, the app is still not very secure as far as I know but you can shim this lock so I don't know, $80 shimmable lock. <laughs> Say what? What's the fuck? <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> who, who brings something like that to the market? So, so can you make like, like you just need a soda can, right? To make it yeah, it's, there's videos all over <laughs> YouTube of You drink some soda before you take the lock off. Yeah. And you I mean, we know that from $5 locks, but from $80 locks, I don't know. Probably they changed it now, I don't know. This is the version I got two years ago. Actually ordered it here to New York and same day I got it, I knew, oh shit. Okay, the no key is a little bit different kind. Uh, we <coughs> analyzed the hardware quite well. There's an SFDEF paper by Michael Hübler. So if you're interested in the inner workings of that lock, search on the SSDEF page or search for no key SSDEF, you should find the paper. But so far we didn't find a mechanical or magnetic or other bypass of that kind. So the mechanics 
are quite okay. And actually, two years ago, I talked about having broken it, but not releasing the details because we were in vendor disclosure. Two weeks later at DEF CON, and sorry to Rose Ramsey for making fun of him again, he posted that slide in his talk. Very good talk. He took apart like 12 Bluetooth padlocks, which were all real crap. And the Nokia was not that much crap, obviously. But as I said earlier, calling something uncrackable or uncracked is a bit difficult. What annoyed me much more was the blog post by Noki, which I already had vendor disclosed my findings to. <laughs> and they posted a blog post in Noki as the uncracked Bluetooth padlock of DEF CON. So I think that was a little bit, I don't know. Premature. So, yeah. <laughs> Possibly they have different departures for technical and for public relations, I don't know. So let's uh, do the full disclosure here. <laughs> so what I told... Wait, 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 there's something blurred out here. <laughs> yeah, that's, I think, my personal... No, I don't know. Mm. Um, what I, what <laughs> I told you already... <laughs> I still use it lock on my bike, no, I don't. So uh, what I told you two years ago again is uh, go and look into these things. This is actually using a man the middle proxy on the TLS of my mobile phone so I can watch the communication between the application and the server of Noki. So as you can easily see, this is a way to recover your password in case you have forgotten it. <laughs> but this, of course, is not a real attack because it's my own mobile phone, so this is not an attack to the lock, but it's just interesting to see how it works. What is more interesting, we saw how the shared locks feature works. So you, a friend, can share locks to me, and then in my app, I can, when I log in, I get this, uh, records over the internet, and I see there's a lock key in there, which is a hex string, and there's a time uh, in which time I'm allowed to open that lock. The funny thing is, even if the time expires, the lock key, of course, stays the same. So if I modify my app, I can open the lock from that time on always using that key. Nice thing is they put an option to rekey your lock, but unless you do that, uh, the time restriction isn't really working. But you don't have to, act, to actually hack uh, the app. You can just use the man in the middle proxy and let him replace 2016 by 2066. <laughs> same, same. And using the original app can still open the lock. So there's a small uh, thing more. They do an online check, but it also it asks the server, is he still allowed? I can man the middle of the server and answer, yes, yeah. it's still allowed. <laughs> so the time restriction on that is not really the cleverest. But that's still not hacking the lock, right? That's just a friend gave me the things and the restriction is not, not so exact. So what we actually wanted to do is sniffing the lock. And as I also said, get a Bluetooth sniffer. Who has ever sniffed Bluetooth LE? Very few hands. That's really easy. The sniffers are out there. They can be bought by Adafruit. You can build your own by flashing the Nordic sniffer firmware to any Nordic dev board. There's Wireshark plugins. So sniffing Bluetooth low energy really is easy. And what, uh, the talk I made a little bit fun earlier sniffed like 12 locks who used clear text passwords. <laughs> so everybody with a sniffer could have found out that in minutes. So look at your stuff and the person who asked what locks to recommend at least try that on the things you buy. So sniff all your Bluetooth. So the no key we sniffed here and we got some very cryptic strings. It looked pretty randomly. So the distribution of ones and zeros is very, very even, so it's probably really encrypted. And they also claim to use AES encryption, so that's industry-grade, unbreakable encryption, as we all know, right? The star note always is, if done right. And I want to put a small disclaimer. This is actually the two years ago research, and they, of course, after our disclosure, changed things. I can't tell anything about the new version because we haven't really looked into it too closely, but this is the old version and it was there for almost two years on the market and like six months after our disclosure. Okay, so it's crypto. We decompiled the app and found that. I think I told that also. It's a very nice key of zero, one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was fun last time already, right? So, but even if it would be a better key, the key was in the application, so it's in your phone, and you can find it in your phone, because your phone has to know the secret to communicate with the lock. So in this way, even a better key wouldn't have been much better. So if we use that to decode the message that we sniffed, we get a not 
so random message anymore, and there's a structure in it, 7E is some command string, so that works for the two first messages, which basically just say, ho, oh, I'm the phone, I'm the lock, and then we get garbage again. So we had to go into the harder part of it. The application, if you decompile it, also something I can recommend, decompile your applications, there's online decompilers, just upload the APK, you get back a Java source, sometimes obfuscated, sometimes it's not obfuscated, in this time uh, part, there was an assembler part inside the app, so we had to start up IDA Pro, and thanks to the friends who helped me on that, it's really working through the assembler code, is <laughs> actually quite some work. But if you do it, you find a function like that, which basically is an XR on some bytes, and after figuring it out, we saw what they're doing in these first two messages is they create a session key. So we send something to the lock, the lock uh, creates a send random number and sends it back, and then by XORing the two code sent, the app that was modified by me to send 42, the lock sent a random number. We add this to the center of the silly default key of 0, 1, and so on, in the, basically like it's aligned, so you XOR it and add it exactly in the center, you get a session key, and using this session key, uh, the whole rest of the communication is encrypted. So if I use that key and decrypt the next message, I actually get, uh, again, a readable command and the thing in the, as it, what you see in the bottom is actually the lock key. So if I sniff a communication of somebody opening his lock, I can fully read it. I don't have to know any prior stuff. I, I don't watch his pairing or anything. Just from the third message, I got his lock key and own his lock forever. So it's AES encrypted, but AES done wrong. Yeah, yeah. Fucking <laughs> nice. Yeah, wow. so open. Wow. Yeah. Open. Open. Open, open for sure. <laughs> about, yeah. about half the room understood that, and is, they're so stunned into <laughs> silence, and the other half of the room wants to download yeah, IDA right now. <laughs> yeah, that's... Yeah. But you don't always have to download IDA. As, as I said, the Nokia was one of the more harder locks. Most of the Bluetooth stuff is much easier. Just sniff it, or it's awful out there. So we come to the easier part. If you're actually, I want to do some advertisement. If you're more interested in the details of the Noki hack, uh, go to YouTube for lock picking in the IoT. So you'll find a one hour talk by me disclosing everything in very detail. Yeah. So this is just a short teaser to make you interested. <laughs> so this is basically something for everybody and it was discovered by Michael Hübler from the Munich Locksport. Is there a question regarding the other thing? No. Possibly later. So Michael Hübler from the Munich Sport Group ordered also some electronic locks, and this is like an Euro cylinder for European doors where you enter a key code and then you can turn the knob. And what he discovered is that silly plate in the front, you can remove it quite easily with a screwdriver, and what you find is a cable. <laughs> if you put five volts on that, the door lock opens. <laughs> And, there's, and there seem to be some, some variants of that. So kudos, Michael. <laughs> I, I think he released that on the Amazon review of the lock. So <laughs> I, I think the, the vendor disclosure matches the quality of the lock. What's this bike, crazy bike picture you got next? Yes, uh, you, you just spoiled it. I wanted to ask you, what do you oh, see here? Sorry. <laughs> Oh, your bicycles. Yeah, that's bicycles. Like bicycles. I got it, I got it, I got it. So what, what he sees here is bicycles. What I see here is locks. <laughs> so each of these bicycles has a Bluetooth lock on them. So of course we, uh, and there's uh, one company called O-Bike. This bike isn't the O-Bike because the O-Bikes are yellow. Uh, flooded all over Europe with like thousands of bikes. They lie around in cities and they were really awful bikes. You don't want to drive them. And meanwhile, they're bankrupt, so I think we can tell everything. <laughs> <laughs> which, which isn't so bad, because we basically did what I pray. We analyzed the Bluetooth, we decompiled the app. The app is heavily obfuscated. It was still, it was possible to read some of the functions. And all we found out is that the lock is actually sending a challenge to the server of Obike, and the app is just relaying it. So there's no secret in the app. The only secret is in the lock. The lock is... As the processor is locked down, so you can't read out the firmware. And uh, the server obviously has another secret. We think it's DS encrypted, but we didn't find a key or anything. So that's actually done quite okay from what we found. 
the other thing is another member of our group found that in that slot that you see here where, the, where you lock it, you can insert a bent piece of metal, reach the actor on the top and pop the lock open. <laughs> So that's is the other lesson, lesson with electronic locks, There's often a second way, <laughs> usually an easier one. Right. And I think I had to go fast because we're quite short on schedule, so that was my part on right electronic on. locks. Ladies and gentlemen, Ray. Can we, can we do another question from the audience, please? Yes. So. We I know that voice. <laughs> Hi, baby. Uh -oh. Not yelling hey. at you. <laughs> so the, the question I've got is for, for folks that are interested in actual physical access security, um, access controls for buildings, there's, there's O'Day on everything, but the question is this. If you're satisficing between the best kind of remote authentication for, for any kind of access controls and the physical locks that you can gain access to buildings with, what's the combination of the best remote authentication protocol, such as, you know, uh, whatever it is, RFID, MyFair, whatever, and the physical access that is on a given door. What's the combination of the two things that make it, you know, the, the least likely to be targeted by such professionals as yourselves? I mean, I can tell you what we use in our Munich hackerspace, and that's the combination of SSH and Apple Protec. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. But it's not industry standard. It's a higher I bar to implement. <laughs> <laughs> and to use. SSH is not so convenient in your pocket. But well, in America, <laughs> uh, we're fucking lazy as shit. All right? that's, that's kind of our jam. Um, yeah, the lowest common denominator, the simplest password, the simplest implementation. Whatever makes Dave get up in the morning and have to bring one fucking thing to work. And the password's 1234 because. Everybody knows it. When I fire him, the password's still one, two, three, four. Yeah. <laughs> We're Seriously. all about the low bar. Seriously, the first time I showed up at a new job on the first day, one, two, three, four on the touchpad, in the door. Yeah. One, two, three, four yeah. on the raised floor in the data center. Mm -hmm. That's security. Just right. lazy. Security theater lazy. It's kind of our jam. Yeah. Yeah. So. But now, yeah. like, we're, we're just, you know, we're shitting all over stuff because that's kind of what we do, right? But it, there's never supposed to be one instance where shit goes wrong. Like, yeah. ev who, who, oh, someone on this side of the room was talking, I've heard the word layers keep popping up when people yeah. ask yeah. that. Layers. I think layers. that was, yeah. Like onions? Yes. All about layers. Yes, absolutely. Parfait? Yeah. The more, you know, it, you know it, it comes down to the, the more parano paranoid you are, the more layers you have. Uh, Click, I think, was the most paranoid out of all of us with uh, five his, layers. His cats. He had to protect I have I have two cameras. Cats. But I love that because they were cheap. Layers? The layers, don't, the layers don't have to be expensive. Oh, I thought no. she meant the cats were cheap. Yeah, my cameras, I mean, my cameras were $10 on eBay each. That's 20 bucks. Come on. Yeah. Stop being cheap. And layers don't always work either, though, so you have to be honest with yourself. Look at, uh, uh, what's his name, just did with a prank call and actually called the president on Air Force One. Yeah. There's yeah. lots of layers between Air Force One and a generic caller calling it's really, the White House. It's really not. But they were homogeneous yeah. layers. Yeah. Yeah. There was one, pro I'm going to bet, one architect who sold that system and that team built every piece of it. And it I don't want to, you know. It was more social engineering than anything else. Here, you know, like, I don't want to be the fucking... Cuck libtard snowflake, as everyone online calls me in the ill mob, but like, <laughs> if you put diversity in your fucking teams, if you have different voices building different shit, you're gonna have a way more secure system because you're gonna build in things that I wasn't thinking of, or Night Owl wasn't thinking of, or Max wasn't thinking of, or Lady Merlin wasn't thinking of. Like, different voices are gonna have their own perspective, and if you Absolutely. fuck with that, get different fucking voices on your security team, and it's gonna break the brains of everyone trying to break in. I think, yeah, that's what it comes down to. Yeah, in the, the financial industry, they have a similar uh, way that they di diversify your funds. Um, depending on your age, they do a 70-30 split. It should be maybe a 50-50 split, depending on how paranoid you are. Um, you know, maybe you have five locks on your door lock and you only lock two of them, but then you have a security camera that's 24-7 that's to a VPN that only you have access to. There's all types of rabbit holes you can go into, but just, again, don't rely on just one means of security because that's your weakest link. 
rely on different voices. What were you going to say? But also, the voices in your head are good. <laughs> and also, a, little, a little bit of paranoia goes a long way. Yeah. Amen. And actually check that every security mechanism you're using is working as it's supposed to. Because especially with RFID, I see all the time that you know they'll be utilize maybe a decent crypto standard, but the key will be the hex code for white. All that. Or it's default. They don't even bother to change it. Yeah. Right. Or maybe you have the same key as everyone else who bought that device. Like if you used iClass Legacy. How many times have you heard the story where someone goes to the car park after going to the mall, they go to a white Toyota, go in, start it up, go home, and then realize it's, it's not, not my, my car. car. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Skeleton keys. It's not, it's not a skeleton key. It's a wafer. Are we off. showing our age? Right, well, maybe. No. Okay. No, it's it's just I that. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I didn't we got. We still got uh, people who've been standing diligently. Can we take one more? And we'll show you some photos and take one more and just. Are you all still having fun? Yeah. Right on. Shout it out, AV. Turn them up. More liquor. So uh, my comment is that you've all turned different shades of pink uh, due to the alcohol that it's you've been drinking. It's the lighting. So, it's the lighting. Yeah. It's the lighting. Yeah. I'm going to go with they that. They changed the lighting. My it's question is about the pink. master Bluetooth lock. Uh, maybe I came late, but uh, tell me uh, how to own this lock. Um, oh, yeah, I can. <laughs> how much are you paying per hour? Did you say uh, master lock? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, uh, the, the master Bluetooth. Bluetooth. Yeah, we looked actually. I. I think I have it in the other talk I mentioned, <laughs> but we haven't uh, successfully hacked the Bluetooth part yet. But there's two sizes of the master Bluetooth locks, the small, like, normal padlock sized one and the outdoor version, which is a little bit more heavy. And the smaller version, at least in the versions I owned, I could open with a magnet. Yeah. So there's, I think, even a video of it in my, in my other talk, the lock picking in the IoT where you slide magnet from side to side and you rotate this way the motor inside the lock. It's basically the same vulnerability they had in the old electronic master lock with the four di directions, so no Bluetooth, just four buttons and you can enter a code. Mm -hmm. That one was very easy to open, like also Michael Hübler in Munich discovered the first thing, time, I think. And we told them that, so basically before releasing it on the CCC Congress, and except for threatening us with some legal stuff, they didn't really react, expect uh, for telling, possibly we add some shielding. In this Bluetooth lock, they added some shielding, so you have to use one size a bigger magnet. <laughs> <laughs> but the outdoor lock is the one that I was uh, referring to. I'm curious. I, I didn't manage to open the outdoor lock with the magnet, but the mechanism is the same, so probably three size more bigger, I don't know. <laughs> Thanks. So, are the uh, Bluetooth uh, are they uh, excuse me are they are they vulnerable to replay attacks? As far as I can tell, no. So it was not like a simple uh, replayable code. I might have overlooked something, so we didn't go too far into it because it was boring after opening it with the magnet. I must admit. <laughs> The same goes for the dock and bone. I didn't look too deeply into the Bluetooth, but that one obviously is replayable. The master lock might be better in that respect. Right on. We got a couple more people there. Can I, um, I just want to show a couple photos. I'm going to be really quick. There's something my wife and I built that I've been really like happy with that people enjoyed. Um, yeah, the so, swing, the swing, yeah, yeah, the booze box, right? Oh, like, no, I thought yes, you meant yes. What, booze? What? <laughs> so, yeah, the liquor lockers, the booze box, the <laughs> ethanol. Access. The, we had all these names for this thing. Um, we were visiting friends of ours, Mike and Liz. We're, they're, they're out in this little town in far away Washington and this, you know, in Port Towns. And we go into this antique shop and we found this old mailbox. And it's really neat. So the, the federal lock company made this interesting combination dial. Lock. It's a gorgeous kind of system. If you've ever seen these little multi point stars on an old mailbox, most of which have been retrofit nowadays with just key-based locks because no one wants to dial a combination. Uh, so I, I bought this fucking thing. I was like, oh baby, check this out. We gotta make room in the truck. Putting this in it, I'm buying this thing. Like, help me, yeah, help me get this upstairs because it weighs a billion pounds. <laughs> and yeah, so I, you know, I take it home and the locks, of course, it's, they're super old. They're all shit, they're all corroded and getting them, getting them apart sucked. 
And I'm like, all right, we'll just throw everything ultrasonic. If you've seen my liquor hacking talk, we have this Chinesium ultrasonic bath that we use for dumb shit. So, you know, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna clean up the locks. Okay, you know, get them all nice, make them polished. And she's looking at me, she's like, why are you spending all this time, you know, bathing? And it, someone on, on Twitter said this looked like I was deep frying locks. They're like, what are you doing? <laughs> You're not wrong. It, yeah, yeah, I bet locks. you do, yeah. I bet Extra you do. Extra crispy. So, you know, we're, we're cleaning up these locks. And I was like, no, I got a plan. Trust me, I got a plan. And I keep going back to Home Depot. And, you know, I'm like, all right, I need solvent. She's like, what? Like the mineral spirits? I'm like, no, I need stronger solvent. Because there's this caked on awful paint on the oh, front yeah. of this thing. So I'm, I'm trying, I'm slathering on all this terrible stuff. Jasco. Nothing's moving. Yeah. Yes, Jasco. Jasco yeah. which, if you never use Jasco, get the long gloves because it <laughs> burns your hands. Ventilation is necessary. Yep. Yes. <laughs> But, you know, you put Jasco in an ultrasonic and heat it, and it will actually chew away decades-old, terrible carcinogen. A respirator. Like, yes, known to cause California and brain cancer, cells. just paint. Um, definitely, like, you know, scrub that shit off, and you reveal, like, gorgeous brass underneath. So, all right, we're getting somewhere. And I do old furniture restoration, so she and I are out there just busting up, you know, the wood and staining it a billion times. Night Owl was helping me figure out that, like, the, the keys that are involved. This is the, I love that this touches on all different ports of Locksport, like old shit, um, hard to get shit, because these keys are supposedly restricted. They're the reverse Yale 8 keyway. So you have, like, in America, you're not supposed to order these, but, you know, overseas, who gives a fuck? Yeah, so, yeah, so we ordered JMA and Fucking Jet, America. like, they make the blanks. So I cut up some new keys, and I've, again, I got this plan, right? I got this whole chart in my head, and I am start pinning up locks. And I'm putting all these together, and I stamp them all so I can keep track of them, because there's, you'll see, there's purpose, right? And, she, you know, lovingly, she's watching me just spend, a, you know, on, all day, I'm, like, not answering calls. You were in, I don't know where the hell you were on a job, and I'm like, all right, I'm busying myself down in the workshop and putting locks back together, and shit, so I'm sending her weird photos. She's like, <laughs> what are you doing? I'm like, I'm doing a double D panel prep, and, you know, it's, it's how you install a lock correctly when it's an abloy. Abloy! Wait, wait, yeah. wait. Yeah. So what was your response to all that? It was like, oh, great, take the trash out. It was... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> she will drive, I will tow it in the truck. So like we, all this stuff, put it together, and I put a back door on it, because you know, a post box doesn't have a back door, right? So the whole idea is that now, like it all works, because I got it with like a, no keys worked, so like I had to repin everything, everything works. So here's the idea. At first, I thought it would just be a cool, like one more wine rack, because we have a lot of booze in our house. So I'm like, all right, you know, we could put all the, you know, different wines in it, and it's not actually a good wine rack. You can't see what the hell's in it. <laughs> but here's what it is. I made a contest box, and all the locks get progressively harder and harder and harder and harder, and they, as you go up and up and up. So... Does the booze get yes, better? Yes, the booze, that's the point, oh. yes. <laughs> so we went... Uh, we went to tour camp. If you don't go to, uh, how many people anywhere in this room, you're probably going to get more hands than most places, go to the hacker camps in Europe. Like you've gone to the Dutch camps or the Germans, you know, you know, chaos camp, or in the U.S., the one camp we have is tour camp. We went to tour camp and we brought the booze box and we filled it up with like wines and whiskeys. And we're like, hey, anybody who can get a door open, like it's yours. So that was, it was the most self-running contest all weekend. <laughs> and everyone... When did he get old enough to drink? Uh, yeah, Brett's, no, <laughs> Brett's Brett 21. Is, yeah, he's not now. It's going in the wrong way. Brett showed me an ID. It said, his fake ID is sure super <laughs> convincing. And it was, the best, it was the best part of our weekend to watch all of our friends, like, liberate these bottles of liquor and just be able to, like... And everyone who, like, half the people who got bottles were like, hey, who needs a drink? Like, I just want to pour drinks for friends. Most people cared about picking more than they cared about the booze. So... <laughs> Although... If, you know, yes. Let's <laughs> yeah. be clear. So never discount the idea of anything that gets people to... I love Locksport in that way, that it gets people to show up. It gets people to say, oh, what's going on over there? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah, Kenny. If anybody doesn't know Kenny, like you know, absolutely Octasavi. Portland, Iris. Oregon. Yes, Portland, yes. exactly. <laughs> so build build lock games and make lock all the cool games you've seen down in the village have all been just someone who's like, Oh my god, I could maybe make a thing that would make people interested. And it makes other people show up. And you don't have to give away like crazy good liquor. 
you can just you it, know, give it, away fun. It you does help. Like it, it helps. We it gave helps. away like a thousand dollars worth of liquor that weekend. Yes, <laughs> but he supported the team. Yes. Amen. Exactly. Um, just have fun with the thing. Think of the things you build as a way for people to show and be like, "Oh, what's happening over there?" And then they sit down and then they keep trying. So we had a great time with that. Uh, we, by the way, if you want to do the super low rent version of this. Um, Booker's bourbon comes in that box, right? Super good. Yes. <laughs> so you can take that box, just Dremel, like Dremel the plastic like an inch <laughs> short. Drill a hole through the top of the box. Now the plastic will slide in, but if you put a padlock through it, it can't slide back out. And what I do is I like, I take these boxes, I go to bars and like with friends. So we'll ask the bartender for a pint glass and we'll put a pint glass in, slide the plastic, put a lock on it, and say anyone who can liberate the glass will buy your next round. And it, it becomes this fun party. It becomes this thing where people are like, oh, what's that person trying? Be like, well, they got three seconds left. To, uh, you want to try for free beer? You can try for free beer. Do anything that gets people involved, whether, whatever kind of hacking you're doing. And yeah, we're going we're gonna to finish. We're all the, everyone who's standing up right now, I swear to God, I'm going to get your questions. But has everyone had fun so far tonight. More booze. Before we, um, before we do the questions, can, can the New York chapter talk a little bit about the bottle again and who is not with us tonight, please? Oh. Hey, uh, all right, you take that? Yeah. Stand down. I'm, uh, I'm Chaz, and I was given the, uh, the bottle. And uh, I really don't know how long Mr. E had been hanging out with Tool in New York City, but uh, he was an interesting character. Amen. He loved locks. He loved picking it, and he loved hanging out with us, and he was a really cool guy. If you came to any of our Tool meetings in New York City, most of us back those days were meeting up at 181st Street up by the George up Washington Bridge. Up Way, Way uptown. Take a ride. Mr. E was the kind of skinny guy who always wore a bandana around his neck to cover up the fact that he had one of these a things. Box. He had a voice box. And, you know, I'm not mocking him. It's, that's the way he was. And when you have one of those things, you can't yell. So he really appreciated the fact that we met up at 181st Street at a quiet restaurant and we dumped our locks on the tables and we picked them and he asked Night Owl and Click and everybody else about this and that and he was just a wonderful guy. And he was a kind of kooky. And before he passed, and he didn't know if he was gonna survive the last treatment or not, he handed me this bottle of absinthe, which everybody's gotten a glass of, hopefully. And we miss him. Amen. Dearly, he's uh, he was kooky, but he was a good guy. He was kind-hearted. He never said anything bad about anybody, and I salute him. Thank you, everybody. Mr. E. Mr. E. Mr. E. And now, everyone who's been diligently waiting, um, please, yes. Thanks. What are your questions? So uh, I've been going. Oh, one minute. Oh shit! One minute. What? What? Oh Christ! What? I've, no! Quick, quick ask I've been one question. Everyone, oh, right. everyone else, we will answer your questions down in the village. I've been going to all this conference. booze continues. With more Speed booze. Go. Speed. So I've been going to Speak. hold conferences since about the beginning, and I uh, want to thank you guys for some of the skills. And, and one skill in particular I really appreciated, talking about hacking all sorts of kind of things, was I was in Europe where there was a, a, a toilet where the toilet roll paper was one foot diameter. And I pulled and got just one square, and then it was locked. <laughs> and I could get nothing. So always remember to have something with you that you could improvise into a lockpick. Amen. And I looked you have? my skills from, from all of my meetings here over the decades and was able to, to salvage that. Uh, what would you use? <laughs> Come on, speak so up. What would you use I want to thank you guys. And then I'll ask my other question later. Locksport helping you shit in peace since 1990-something. <laughs> so we do. So we do. We support that message. Uh, one thing. So the first time I had, or I purchased progressive locks was I think like DEF CON 19. And I did pick all of those locks on the toilet. 
Oh, and, nice. and, and, and his defense, you picked yeah. other locks while on the toilet. It while was, on the toilet, it was in and out. Then it was locks. It was. <laughs> sure, it was, buddy. Sure, right. it was. And it it on was in note. and out. <laughs> and on that official and statement. A big round of applause. <laughs> so you think uh, at the Hope 2020, we should have three hours? Tool yeah, NYC, yeah. Tool DC, Tool Boston, yeah. Tool across the world. Am I right? Tool Germany, yeah. Tool across the world. Damn no, it! Called SSDF. Tool everywhere. In Germany, they still have like SSDF, the so oldest so lock picking sports club of the world. They want you to know. Damn that. right. Yeah. Tool. Keep finding friends who are different than you in different places, because you're more the same than you know, and you'll learn more than you could ever imagine. That's why Hope is awesome. Okay, like, so I, I, I think the biggest thing for Tool is we wouldn't be here if you weren't here to come help us out and come pick locks. So all the cons you come to, thank you for that. Thank you for learning. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, okay. They go for Bia. They turn the light off on Steve Rombaum, not me. Oh God.